and gentlemen, he is the uh, he is an X Games champion, a gold medalist, uh, a celebrated artist, and and he's and a and a beautiful yodeler, one of the greatest yodelers not from uh, the Alps you've ever met. Arlo, you ready to do your intro? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you intro the movie? So what we are going to do is we will start with the intro from the video. We are actually going to play you about the first four minutes of the hoax. It will introduce you to the characters, and then we will break into the panel discussion. So thank you all for coming out. And now, without further hesitation, let's present. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. The hoax, hoax two. two. Thank you. This is a true story of five skaters going across America. Coming from the east side, going to the west side, flowing to the north and the south. You know what we're about, so I uh, send let them check it out. You know what's funky, so funky like monkey manure Even more funky than a dirty ghetto sewer But what do you know I can't do flow Just tell your hoe to let me go Cause I swing high Just keeping it left the capital I man, I can't freak it with the freak of a way that you Can never understand, you know I rip it up from the outside to inside So tell me who really is the man We're about to embark on a 33 day skating tour across America We're getting this Winnebago, this 34-foot car, sort of, and we're going to drive across country and, you know, play our, our video games. Little kids are going to take us out, we're going to hurt ourselves. And this is, yeah, this is every skater's dream, I can't believe it. It's really happening to me. You always think it's going to happen to somebody else, but, you know. It happened to me. It'll, it could happen to you too. In each city you go to, there's all these little kids that want to skate with you, and there's so much stuff that you've always wanted to do that you finally get a chance to do it now. This opportunity came up. I was just like, man, I, I gotta go. You know, I gotta be the one to be there. I mean, I dreamed this before it ever even was dreamt of. Before anybody ever thought of it, I dreamt of this and I knew this was going to happen for me someday, and it has. Shop in the sound line that I send you to the rehab Before you step to this punk, don't forget the knee pad And be glad where you're coming from and where you're going to Cause nobody cares for you, I thought you knew But you don't have a clue, microphone or pass it Or end up in the casket, but what you see me blast it I'm large like your body There's a lot of kids out there A lot of, a lot of people doing really, really, really incredible things And so now, instead of just taking together all this footage I want to we're actually going out, we're getting it It's just a tragic because I got that wicked ass hat you can't get enough of this funky stuff Every time we, we see a trick, we underestimate the talent that's out there We say, oh, in a couple of years I'll be doing this And then what do you know, in a month's time There's some kid who's five foot one Who lives in some small town who can do it
yo, I want to give money to my man. Oh, wow. Step one, two of the people in that, in that opening credits are no longer with us. Raise a glass for Matt Manson, Brian Bell, motherfuckers. Rest in peace. I'd also like to acknowledge, so that is the intro to the video. Now I'd like to introduce you to all these people 30 years later, odd. 28 years. 30 years. <laughs> also, by the way, B-Love was doing that freaking far side down that King Drought 30 years ago. That's crazy. There's a lot of things that B-Love was doing uh, ahead of the curve, uh, way before anyone else. He's the one, and I've always said, B-Love is one of the most underappreciated uh, skaters in terms of what, his impact on tricks. He's the first one who was balancing backslides. He invented the Soyal, and as you can see in this video, or anyone who's seen Hoax, he was a very innovative skater. B-Love. B-Love Harden. So that's B-Love. We have all on the end, Brooke Howard Smith, yeah! Michael Opalik, yeah! my name's Arlo Eisenberg, yeah! and this is the filmmaker Evan B. Stone. Yeah! And, and I want to say something, this is the very first time in 30 years we've done this, we've been together talking about the film, in fact, the first time probably in 30 years we've watched that together, right? So thank you for giving us this opportunity, John Julio, Santa Ana, and Blading Cup. But there is someone who is not here on the panel, and uh, his, his omission is conspicuous, so we'd like to acknowledge Brian Smith wanted to be here. He was the hardest working person on The Hoax 2, uh, producing B-roll, skating. I mean, he was a true showman and a great skater. Brian wishes he could be here. He's actually on shoot in Mexico, but he sent us a video message, a video greeting. So we'd like to share that with you guys now. What's up, everybody? How are you doing? Brian Smith here. You guys know me as Brian Smith, now I'm Brian Bowen Smith, but uh, sorry I couldn't be there. I'm down in Mexico, but uh, I don't practice Santeria, and I ain't got no crystal ball. But um, I'm really bummed I couldn't be there today. The great group of guys with you. Um, that movie changed my life. Uh, I don't know if I'd be in a lot of places without that, especially Evan B. Stone letting me come sleep on his couch in Venice, California, way back in the day. And I remember Mike, uh, which, which explains the old cowboy hat today, is that Mike and I were talking on the phone, and uh, this was way before social media or anything like that. I didn't know what he looked like um, for the most part. And I just said, I'll, I'll wear a big cowboy hat. You'll, 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 uh, you'll recognize me then. And Mike picked me up straight to Evan's house after a burrito, straight into the water and uh, got, got into the rollerblading business. And um, one, of, one of the best things that ever happened in my life. So it's really cool that um, we're still remembered for what we did on that tour. And some of the things are better that we forgot about that we did on that tour. Um, but um, hope you guys have a good day. And uh, promise me you'll see me soon. Take care. If you if you follow his Instagram, if you follow, Brian is now one of the world's best photographers. He's shot everyone. He shoots Clooney and the world. And he's uh, if you follow his Instagram, Brian Bone Smith. He is a, he's on a shoot in Mexico and with three models. So you just have to give him this one. He's got a pass. Yeah, we we wish Brian could be here. The hoax is we're about two years from celebrating 30 years, the anniversary. Uh, we'll have to get together again and get Brian on the panel so we can do a full like 30 year retrospective reunion. Uh, but for now, uh, we wish Brian could be here and we appreciate him sending his messages. So one of the things that the hoax too is known for in addition to the skating and everything else is the antics. You put five people into Winnebago, you travel across the country, you have a, you know, a, a visionary filmmaker and you're gonna capture a lot of great footage. So I'd like to show you just a quick clip of some of the antics, some of the more notable antics from uh, Hoax 2. Yeah. 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 Guys, you guys, uh, I, got a, I got a little lesson here for you guys. I, I see your young guys coming up. 
you ever have a rough night drinking, you're out all night, you know, you're having a lot of alcohol. The next morning, don't eat an apple or anything with like acid in it. You know, a lot of fruits have a lot of citric acid. Because Mike made that mistake just a couple of days ago and he vomited all over the place. <laughs> Because <laughs> the apple I ate this morning. And, and the burger I almost ate. <laughs> How did he do that? Oh, there you go. Nice. What are the, the blue pants on? Or blue screen. The sweat. Yeah. What's his name? Brian Smith. Brian Smith. <laughs> so, Brian. These girls, this one girl right here thinks you're cute and she would like to kiss you. Really? Hey, 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 kiss my cheek. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, hey, I'm not stealing their car. <laughs> Ryan, get in! Let's go! That's actually Arlo stealing a couple of girls' car while they were talking to the... Peoples. Why do I have to talk? Talk about the, we'll talk about the... So, Opalic, the apple scene is one that we get asked about a lot. Is that a true story? And is that an is that actual like valuable advice? Do we really throw up if you eat citric acid after a night of drinking? For me, yes. Uh, it doesn't work well. That was the second time I ate an apple and vomited after a night of drinking. So, don't do it. So one of the things that made the hoax too so beloved is the fact that it wasn't uh, just a skate video. It was the film quality, it was the production, it was the, uh, the emphasis on B-roll, on building characters, on putting personalities into Winnebago. Um, and we as skaters, this was not our vision. This was brought to us by Evan. He had the vision for, uh, for hoax too. Evan, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about where this idea came from. Hey guys. Um, thank you for coming, and I know a lot of you guys, thank you. Uh, a lot of you guys are filmmakers here, and I must say, I'm pretty honored. Um, when you guys are in the edit room and you're cutting or you're finishing your project, you know, make it great. You know, because everything you do could be something that later in life that, you know, you other people care about. Um, I shot it in 16 millimeter. We use a an Area SAR camera. We had a Betacam 400 uh, and some Hi8. And um, uh, the emphasis was on quality. I come from music videos and documentaries. So when I met with these guys, I saw the skate films were just tricks, and I was like, that's not. There's nothing to it, right? Because the tricks go out of style right away. So well, it, not, not not right away, <laughs> but it it. I wanted to entertain and also show my creative expression through filmmaking. Um, there's a couple of songs in there, you guys are going to see one that is just me flexing really. Um, and um, I think that's a big part of it. For those of you that grew up and like I said, how many, I'm going to do just a quick questionnaire here. Hands up if you think you've seen the hoax more than 20 times, hands up. Okay, 40 times, seen it more than 40? Like 100 times, anyone seen it more than 100 times? And so what Evan Stone did, one of the key components was that he worked as, he was, were you like an MTV director of the year, the year before or something like that? E editor of the year. Yeah, editor of the year. And so Evan connected us and the, the whole rollerblading industry to these bands, whether it was Biohazard or, you know, uh, Sublime, Sublime um, the Mexicans, all of these. And so- 311. 311, 311. So that was massive, right? Yeah. The, we, oh, we, sorry, did, close to your mouth. we did hoax one and that was like hey let's make a film well, we got like lightning in the bottle on that one and it really had like a feeling a real skate film and then mad beef came out and that was like oh, let's be, let's get fun and funny with it right Nebraska, yeah boom. yeah and uh, pretty much I like to laugh I like to I like to have characters in it and you know Brooke here and Brian were like Clowny, really. Not like clowny is a strong term. Yeah, and you know what, these um, guys, and these guys really were passionate about what they do. They were starting Senate at the time, and um, they were just as passionate as I was. I, I think there's, there's also context, guys, and I was with a bunch of you all today, which is, again, amazing, talking to people that was important too. 
where we released the hoax in 93 together. I think you guys also need to know that the name The Hoax comes because Alu and I pretended we were making a movie and then we just didn't know if we were going to make it. Anyway, we'll move along for that. But by the time The Hoax was out and Hoax 2 was starting up, we didn't realize that tens of thousands of you in it, is, who here grew up in Atlanta or Phoenix or all these, Chicago, Milwaukee, Little Rock. Little Rock what we didn't realize was that people all over the country were getting together in their living rooms and watching this thing, Hoax One. And so when we went out on this tour, we weren't prepared for how crazy it was gonna get. We'd turn up to these places and we thought like six people would turn up and you'll see in a second, it was completely different. All right, so, but before we get too far off of the antics, I'd like to touch on pro perhaps one of the most uh, infamous antics that happened in the video. Perhaps the thing that we get asked about the most. Um, and when you put five people in a Winnebago, I don't know what you expect to happen, but tensions can run high. So the next clip we're gonna show you, I think a lot of you will be familiar with already. Us in a little small compartment for about a month straight. Um, personally, myself, I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to love each other. Um, everything's going to be great. A lot of people see this as the real world, where at first everything's hunky. Um, then in the future, all of a sudden people start dogging each other. The next thing you know, it's another real world. Okay, now. You want you want you ever choke me? Get out of my head. Hey, you choke me? Get out of my head. Okay, the deal is this. A punch to my head is going to get you. Oh, my. So, I also want to celebrate that your beautiful immigration services let me back in after 20 years this year. So, cheers to immigration naturalization services. I'm sorry I was such a horrible person. Now you apologize. So, be love you... Before it got into the explosive, right, uh, climax of what happened there between Brooke and Brian, you sort of gave your expectation what you thought would happen on the tour. What were your expect expectations when you found out about traveling in the Winnebago for a month? I, like I said, we were all going to get along. We were all friends. Everything was going to be all good. There was not, that was never going to happen. So one of the things that we get asked the most is, was that real? That incident between Brian and Brooke. And for me, I don't even know how people can even question it. You can no, see- No, no, it's beautiful acting. I'm an amazing it, actor. Dude, you can see the evil intent. It looks vicious and violent. Uh, it did not escalate any further than that. Obviously everyone lived Oh, to, I should point out guys, so if you, if you ever get into any trouble with the crazy person, punching yourself in the head immediately levels the playing field. They'll be like, wait, maybe I don't want to tangle with this person. Be, be the crazy person. I want to mention this happened on day two of the tour. <laughs> right, so we got it out of our system, right? Everything was good after that. Uh, but so the, the video was not all antics. We've got some other highlights from the video. I know there, those of you that have watched it 20, 40 times, there are things that you will expect to see here and we're gonna get to all of them. But the video, something that we started to celebrate here at the opening, was in the artistry of the filmmakers. The fact that it was more than just a skate video, it was like a travel video, a documentary, uh, and the music, and the editing, and the fact that it was on film, right? It wasn't just camcorder. So I'd like to celebrate that and honor it and show you guys just a three minute edit uh, to Sublime uh, and it shows Evan Stone, the award winning filmmaker um, at his best. And by the way guys, this, is, this was one of Sublime's big breaks. Uh, Sublime's management crew were all uh, rollerbladers and they brought, this is the first time Sublime were on MTV, kind of in that space. So uh, also raise a glass to Bradley Knoll who's no longer with us.
the vibe of Hoax 2. It is, the skating's definitely a little raw. Uh, it's, it is a time capsule with the music, the spirit, but you can see, Evan, your touch all over it. It feels and looks a lot like a music video. Oh, yes. Um, thanks. And I'm, hey, I'm, I think it kind of holds up <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm stoked on it, yeah. And, you know, the, the, um, the, I guess the takeaway for me is like every project you do, uh, make it great. Um, this this wasn't the highlight of my life. From here on, I've done a lot of great things. Um, I work in television now. Uh, I do it. Expedition Unknown on Discovery Channel. I'm the DP for seven years. Um, I work and develop my cell shows, and I'm still doing it. And you know what? The, any action sports filmmaker I'd hire because they can follow the ball. They can. Why, when in doubt, widen out. You know, dirt, well, they're gonna get it, you know? Uh, the best filmmakers, I think, are the action sports filmmakers. They always have the best gear. They know the best Kodak to use. They know the compression. I mean, everything technical, the lenses. Uh, so we've always been on the forefront of, of what things, how things look, and we're gonna stay that way, and that's for sure. And, yeah, and, and the skills I've learned from those days, definitely I call upon every day one for making. Keep your batteries charged, you know, critical focus in the eyes, underexposed just a little bit for video, you know, things you learn. So, steady hand. Thank you for those words of wisdom, awesome. And it's true, uh, filmmaking and action sports go hand in hand, no doubt about it. So one of the things that we did on the hoax, obviously, was traveling across the country. It was a big part of we, what- we, we haven't, because it's like a half the room hasn't seen this film. They need to know we spent 33 days and we went through 45 states. They need to know that, you know, how crazy it was for Evan and Craig to rent an RV with like probably some kind of a bond up and then cover it in paint and, you know, art and then put a bunch of people in, in the RV 
And then, as Mike pointed out, that I didn't, I didn't or was it you, B, that said, they had a plan where a guy was gonna drive us, but on day one, the driver, yeah. <laughs> Tell your story, B. Okay, so we had a driver that was gonna carry five skaters, two filmmakers, around the country, 33 days, and we're on day one, and we went to San Diego from LA, and this guy smelt like sweat from skates and gear, and he quit day so, one. So the, he so was the like, first, I'm out. The first day, the whole plan went out the window, and we didn't have a driver. So we became the drivers, and there were so many crazy things that happened, right? That was... So it's a good point. Oh, actually... So it's a great point. Brooke asked how many people have seen the hoax 20 times, how many people have seen hoax 2 40 times. How many people in here have never seen hoax 2? Yeah! Right. Okay, you should probably, there, there is a reason why this is important because conveying and building a community, and I, I think about right now, like I've been super inspired by the quad community here who are building this incredible, like this, what you guys are building is beautiful. What we learned from Evan in the idea of how you actually inspire a whole, like this movement, is to tell these incredible stories. You know, this is a lot of effort to hire the camper van and to take these people across the world. I imagine if you guys could take what you're doing to the world, you will change the world. If, for me to come to Santa Ana and see what quad, what's happening in the quad world right now, if you could take that into every town, you will inspire people, which is what we were lucky enough to do in 90. In, uh, in, in 90. I, got, I, got, I got something to say. You know, back in the day, it was really, it was like you needed a film camera. It cost $100 every 10 minutes to, to export, you know, to develop. Um, the, edit, the edit bays were, it's, uh, you had these controllers on decks, you know? <laughs> so uh, it's a lot easier now, but that doesn't mean anything, really. You still got to be into it. You still got to do what you, like, have a good product and get it out there. I mean, I think back in the day, I kind of figured, was it hard to get in the business? Yeah, uh, but now it's really easy, but still kind of hard. You just gotta have a passion for it and um, just keep doing it. I would like to establish, the Hoax 2 is from 1995. Uh, it was a seminal uh, video in the history of rollerblading. Uh, it was one of the very first videos um, because of the nature of the film, because we had personalities, it was very influential and had a lot of impact in the development and history of skating. And what Brooks says is right, right? For Hoax 2, that was kind of rollerblading. We were at kind of where quad skating is now, you know? You guys are building something. And so there's probably a lot of, I think, um, relatability in what was happening then. Um, and a really special film for a lot of skaters. It's why here, almost 30 years later, we can talk about it and people come out to kind of have, share this experience. So, what I wanted to get into though was, and it broke, alluded to this a little bit earlier, but it was not just five, about five guys in a Winnebago. It was about rollerblading spreading across the country. And so it was about getting into a Winnebago and not just filming you know, San Diego and like LA and Orange County like we did a lot, but getting out and seeing what was happening around and, the country. And you need to, sorry, just before, this is context for all of you that are on like Gen Z. The internet was invented exactly. the year before yeah. this happened. And so we had no idea what we were going out to. But what was incredible is the first movie we made, The Hoax One, had traveled, people had copied it. And so we turned up in these places. We were four and a half hours, five hours late for Art Little Rock, Arkansas. And we thought like six people were gonna be there. And I think this is the next clip. So let's show this, uh, the, what happened when we went to Little Rock, Arkansas. Yeah. Look at him surfing the ground. Let your arms out. Dude, pull up, pull up all that dude. We have security. We have a security guard. Look at that. Yo, it's on in Little Rock. Like, so no PR, no internet, no emails, nothing. This just happened organically. Charged $15 for every kid that went in there, right? I remember.
Thank God for Arlo on tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say, you know, that, that, it better not be about editing or compressed film. No, no, it's okay. not. It's to be about the business of it, actually. Um, each tape, we owned a company called T-Bone Films. Each tape, we made $8 a tape. It went to skate shops across America and then sold it for $19.95. And we made, so $8 a tape. We sold about 30,000 units. That's 250,000. Hey, we're making, we're making movies. And, and we're in. Have to pay the skaters <laughs> we didn't we, pay them anything. Evan told us this story earlier tonight. We're like, what the fuck? We got paid nothing. <laughs> no, no. Nothing. But we we're in truly independent filmmakers. Soul skaters. Yeah. And we were so independent. We were so we were independent from the money. Uh, no, you were sponsored. You were sponsored. No, but you know we were independent filmmakers. We're an exciting time. We're he's gonna hook us up later. He's, he's gonna buy us a drink later. In fact, he's buying us all a drink later. Make some noise for Evan Stone. <laughs> Oh my God. The, point, oh my God. the point is, the point was, the point is, it was a business and it was fun. And we're doing it our way. I mean, and I don't know what you of, thought would come out of this conversation. We're doing it. And, uh, that, and that, it was a business. It's not like that now. Now, YouTube came out. Everyone dubbed the film. Business was over. It was like magic in the bottle at that time in the 90s where you could sell product to people in stores other than skates. You know, it was cool. Awesome. All right, yeah, so lesson learned. Uh, filmmakers, you can make a lot of money making films if you don't pay your skaters. <laughs> but so there's another downside, like there's another downside to the, the film because as cool and as great as the video looked, uh, when you shoot with the, the beta and the film, it also, there were technical limitations. So if they ever, if, you know, if there's something wrong with the camera, it wasn't loaded, whatever, you missed a lot of tricks. And back then, we weren't like Alex Brosco, you know, we weren't hitting everything first or second try. Sometimes it took a lot of work. And so you would finally hit a trick that you've been working on for a long time, and everyone would just look at you and be like, that was for the soul, you're a soul skater. So we missed some of our best tricks. Hey, I wanna ask Mike, because I've got a few clips here of some of the spots that we went to. Mike, in your memory, what are some of the like, what are some of the most memorable spots that we went to? Like by turnout or by the experience that we had there? Uh, well, Little Rock, for one, because A, we were so late. And I just remember we were all hurt. Like, I just broke my wrist in Minnesota, which I didn't know was broken yet. Uh, but I just remember we were tired. And we're, we were like, oh, there's no going to be this. It's going to suck. And it was obviously everyone came out. And, it was amazing. and then we're like, we're all skating. So that place was amazing. Uh, Minneapolis was fun. And New York is New York. And it was yeah. like... Yeah. Yeah. So... All right. Well, you set that up perfect, Michael Pollock. Let's take it's a look do. at the New York City New York City clip. The first time we ever met John Ortiz. Yo, welcome to New York. Where if you don't entertain us, you take your skates and you walk the f home. Yeah. That was Evan's brother. Street skating in New York, it's like 15 million thousand people just walking around, bothering you, telling you you can't skate here. And we tell them to go to hell, because we don't care. We don't do anything bad. All we want to do is skate. And that's what we're going to continue to do until my legs fall off. So we're going to pretty much do it forever, because New York is the street capital of the world. Let's go. Yeah, so a little bit of trivia. That was the first time we ever met John Ortiz. John, and he's in, the, he's in Hoax too. And how epic was it? I mean, New York City is just such a, uh, a cinematic and such an epic location, so it makes everything look grand. But traveling through New York City on the top of the Winnebago, how did that happen? I don't remember where that came from. I have no idea. We just were like, let's get on the roof. And Brooks grabbed his guitar, wherever Brooke went. Did and, he go to uh, grab his guitar? 
Maybe. No, I think he went to the bathroom. Uh, no, we just jumped on the roof and cruised through the city, playing songs, sticking stickers on, on light things and whatnot. Yeah. So New York City was an epic location, but I will tell you the spot that we went to that now, with the benefit of hindsight, looking back on it 28 years later, is probably the most influential spot and would have the biggest imprint on the legacy of inline skating. I'd like to show you guys a clip from the Bay Area, San Francisco. And the introduction of John Julio. I would expect that if there was one moment that had changed everyone's life in this room, it's that we were lucky enough to get, I don't know how it happened, to stop by San Jose, California, and meet a, how old were you? I got a story. 18. An 18-year-old John Julio, and immediately he was like, clearly a, a legendary human being. So ladies and gentlemen, John Julio. Okay, so that, so that day, we went skating. We actually split up into two groups. Yeah, you stay here. And I don't remember who was filming with, because I went with, I think it was me, Arlo, and John. Yeah, whatever. So we go skating, and I'm with John, and, and we heard of this guy from NorCal. He's supposed to be a good skater. We go skating, and he starts skating, and the first thing I think it was like, fuck, I'm done. Like, <laughs> this guy's good. But he was, he was so good. I mean, it was so great to watch him skate and motivating as well. But it was so... It's what we went on this tour for, to, to meet people. To meet, to meet the amazing kids that were skating across the country. Yeah. And it, it was like, it was so awesome and then scary for my, my profession. But it was just amazing. So Now, who here has taken a risk in their life? Put your hands up. You all have. This may not work unless we all commit to it. And I'd already been three or four of those pouch drinks in when I came up with this idea. But here, John Ortiz, put your hands, come here, from New York, John Ortiz, you guys love him, right? How's it going again? It's, so, if we lived in the UK and there was a human being that had influenced our life this much, we would come up with something that was like a physical and verbal tribute to him. And he's got, where is he? He's, get back here, you motherfucker. <laughs> get back here. Julio, where you at? Now, again, I'm not from the UK. This could completely fail. But if it doesn't, it'll be the greatest moment of our lives. So hold up your thing. Here we go. So it just goes like this. We're going to do it five times. I'm going to show you once. It goes like this. Oh. John Julio. Oh. John Julio. OK, you ready? I want to see rhythm, I want to see commitment. None of you are, we're not going to be cool, we're going to be amazing. Are you ready? It goes like this. So just, they do it in parts. Go, oh. Can you do this bit? And this, John Julio. Okay. If it fails, we die. If not, Grace out of life. Ready? Oh, you don't even know, we don't need the bike. Let's go, y'all. One, two, three. Oh. John Julio. John Julio. John Julio. John Julio. <laughs> wow. And that's what it was like no, every day on a, the Hoax Tour. A giant stadium, I imagine a stadium. 
Awesome. So one other location that we went to that was you really just cool. Made me the coolest dad in the world. My kids are over there like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> that was worth. I, I flew 12,000 miles to here. It was worth it for that. That moment. was worth Thank it. That was that big. Well done. And it's why Evan had the, the brilliance and the insight to bring great B-roll uh, producers like Brooke Howard Smith and Brian Smith. So well done, well thought out. We traveled to many different locations. We were introduced and got to capture footage from uh, amazing, soon to be legendary skaters from around the country. But we also were five skaters on a Winnebago traveling to different spots. And so we were able to take advantage of that. And I'd like to show a clip of Opalic and B Love essentially skating in Pennsylvania. See, when we, we go to each college campus, we like to take care of you know the people that you know founded the place, Ben Franklin. You know, he's got balls of brass. But you turned up, like we said, we turned up and these kids were incredible. So you had to try to be better than the kids, which you weren't, and you just got hurt. Yeah. Yeah, so I broke my wrist in Minnesota, and I didn't get it checked for two weeks. I just wore two wrist guards oh, I got until Brian broke his wrist in Boston, and we were end up in New York. And that girl, what was that girl? That Some girl who was like trying to be a doctor, like got us into her friend. Who, she almost lost her license or something. So. <laughs> also, I'll pay $100 for a drink. If anyone can give me a drink, I'll pay $100. <laughs> whatever, whatever this is, I'm in. <laughs> Red Bull vodka. <laughs> Just to be So I, if you remember, on, on, on the second night, I uh, hit my ribs on a bike rack, which they don't, they're, they're not forgiving. So I, had, I, had, I thought I had a broken rib on night two, and we have a whole month tour coming up. And I, I went and laid down in the RV that night, and, and you guys are coming in making jokes and making me laugh, and I'm just like, don't make me laugh, it hurts broke, too much. So I'm like laughing and crying at the same time, but that, that injury ended up lasting basically the whole rest of the tour. I, uh, so who I, I had to gingerly skate for the rest of Who's bruised your ribs or broken your ribs? That shit is awful. It is, you just, nothing, nothing is good. But yeah, it's brutal. I mean, you have to skate every day. You're competing against kids. Um, there's no forgiving and yeah, it's a tough one. So I got another question for you, B-Love, but you were by far the most fashion forward on yeah. the tour. And like you would come out with these looks. Did you, you, I mean, because we were on a Winnebago, you had to prepare for it. Did you put together your, your looks for the, the tour? Oh yeah, for sure. And what did that look like? Is that like thrift store shopping or how did you do it? Yeah, so thrift store shopping was number one, but like in this era, we were like post grunge. So is that what that was? Th there's, there's like it went it went it went from long hair and uh, torn pants to kind of like baggy jeans and shaved hair, and I was like, I want to be a little different. What should I do? I'm gonna go 70s style, and I wore the short shorts and the and the tube socks and feathered hair and my comb that I carried around with me, and. Uh, that was just one individual. Hey, I, I show just him like the shirt. Individual. Show him. So he is wearing like a, an actual oh, no, production Senate shirt with the comb. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, no, I was trying to get the comb up. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 
that style was everything. It was fun. I had fun with it. That's why I love this roller skate style that's happening right now. Yes. That's so, my shit. So it was, uh, it, you know, it was 30, more than 30 days on a Winnebago, and there were some... It was a skate video, it was a documentary, all these things, but it was also a tour video, and so we captured some of that. It's in the video. I want to show one of the sections, one of the clips that captures a little bit this, of what this, tour life was like. We might need to re-edit some of this video. We'll be canceled for some of what happened in the video, but we've edited that shit out. We're not playing the whole video here. I, I, I've actually, we've curated the clips. There are some things we're definitely not showing that I don't think of age particularly well. Have not so, aged well. Right, yeah. And when we say, anyone who hasn't seen the video yet, we encourage you to watch it. I say that with some reservation. There's some things you have to give us a pass on, please. But let's watch. Oh, and at the end of this, at the end of this clip, there, there's some more uh, a Brian Smith's antics. You'll see that when we get to it. My definition of white trash. Oh. Uh, wake up! Where's my mouth, view? Oh, you fucking legend, thank you. Cheers! Oh yeah, this is bad. <laughs> Why? Why? He said, um, he doesn't care what you say. This is what we're talking about. Wait. Wait. Um, there's too many of us. It's not gonna work. But we would like something to eat, so we can feed us with my hands. <laughs> So again, that was a again, again, that's the that's the closest we're going to be playing of tricks, uh, or like moments that could get us cancelled. But in that particular moment, and and if you're out there, Brian Smith that was negotiating with the security guard on getting us, and that was with John Julio, I think, right? That was in San Jose, and Julio was about to do a soul to switch soul on the double rail, and we're desperately trying to get the rest of that done, right? Right. So security comes. We're skating on a school. And Brian is trying to pass it off as like we are, you know, we have deaf students that are skating on the campus. And so Brian is like trying to translate for the security guard. And then as he's, he, as he's deciphering what the alleged deaf students are telling him, I don't know if you can hear it in that audio, but Brian is saying, you can't stop us. There's too many of us. But if you have some sandwiches, yeah. we're pretty hungry. But, but, we want, but we want something to eat, yeah. Is it now? Okay, and, and okay. This, this security guard thing, as you guys know, is, was, it followed us all the way through. We were tackled by security guards that chased us through America. I think I was just checking his messages. Everything okay, buddy? So, no, but, well, because I'm wondering, we want to get to question and answer, so we're making sure that we've, we've allotted some time for that. We have a couple more infamous clips. I think there's, there's one thing in particular we have to get to, right? It, it would be a huge... Uh, right? Um... But are you guys okay? Are you guys having a good time tonight on Saturday night in Santa motherfucking Anna at the Blading Cup? Yes. Okay. I, hopefully this won't be too self-indulgent. I do keep forgetting people have brought their children here. I'm so sorry. But this is the thing that... Uh, this is another infamous, ep infamous episode. This is uh, what, what the filmmakers... Yeah, yeah. Right here, right here. Oh, you, you had a double fist, baby. Big shot. Double fist is my middle name. All right, cheers. It's not yeah, a yeah. shot, though, is it? To hoax two. Hey, to all of you uh, that shared our lives in the 90s and continue to do so today, uh, thank you so much, thank legends, you. all of you. And to skating, quad skating, rollerblading, and all the passions that, that bind us. We're, we're, it, it's so nice to be able to share all these experiences together. Um, and we are making, you know, more experiences as we go. But so, one of the things that I am most infamously associated with was something I had nothing to do with. It was all orchestrated behind our back. But this is what the, uh, the clever, conniving, scheming filmmakers were up to. So while, while we were skating, and we traveled across the country, we went to Texas where I live, and they cornered my mother and set up this bit. So let's show the, uh, this one minute clip here. <laughs> 
Carlo has a Prince Albert. Is this like, are you just like, getting, is this a dirty joke? No. <laughs> What's a Prince Albert? You need to know what a Prince Albert is? I swear when I was in high school, there was like banging up Prince Albert. What do you think about, what do you think about body piercing? Carlo doesn't have anything pierced. question and answer. I don't still have it, which is what they always ask. Now the next is the most, is it? But I can tell you why I don't have it, but that's going to be offline. The most memorable, most celebrated, uh, most talked about uh, antic or B-roll to come out of Hoax 2. Um, there's two of them actually, and they're both in this next clip. So one is about the unofficial sixth member of the Hoax 2 team, and that was Tom Servo. And then the other is the, what has become the theme song of the Hoax 2. So let's look at this clip. We started here, then we went all the way to there, and then last night we drove there to down to Boulder, which is a little north of Denver. Then we were in Fort Collins. So that's where we did our laundry and got drunk. Now, for a while we searched the land. We found out Jimmy sitting in the sand. Shades are on, he's in the house. He ran away with the mouse. He's in the shade, he's by the sea. He's under the branches of the happy tree. Said he's in the shade, he's by the sea. but just too drunk to notice. <laughs> and, and again, for those of you who've been dragged along and don't know, the rest of the movie, this uh, gumball machine, is in the back of almost every shot. We stole the gumball go, go, machine go, go. and then left laundromat in Colorado. And Fort Collins. Awesome. So, Brooke, I'm wondering, as we round out and close out this little uh, panel, how many of you would like to see a live rendition of Happy Tree? Now, I need, I need to preface, usually I'm... So, 10 years, I did it for you, like, a couple of years ago, did a terrible job. And before then, there was 20 years between playing this. And it's a little bit like the, oh, John Julio, it needs everyone to be into it or it's not going to work. So I need to know, calm it down, shh. A, first we have no microphone for this. Secondly, I've got a classical guitar I just met like a minute ago. But do you really want it? Yeah! Santa Ana, Santa Ana, I need you to fucking help me because I've been, is it enough? Okay. This could be a disaster. Yeah. You're gonna have to hold it. Yeah. <laughs> mic, mic, a mic. Oh, oh, no, mic no, no. Oh. Hey, bro, you gotta have a mic right here. And I'm not religious, but tonight praying to Jesus. What? Mike's gonna hold no, no, the mic. No, 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 no,
Rock, I love it so much. He means everything to me, but life ain't always Cheerios and unicorns for breakfast. Sometimes life's a bowl of shit soup for Christmas. Days and nights they stole the way, and when Jimmy, he rolled the way. So I got a brick and I called him Matt, but how I wanted Jimmy back. He's always good to me, he says he's good for the habit, he's the habit. Trey! 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 treat thank you so much for that Brooke so guys what we got now is some I, I should also point out I don't think I've ever remembered all the words so that's oh, really man, exciting you crushed it and I think we know the secret ingredient if you're right if you want to remember all the lyrics so guys if anyone's ever had any questions about uh, hoax too if there's anything behind the scenes anything you've ever just been dying to know now would be a good time. I guess you can just raise your hand uh, and we will take any questions. I think we've got about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I think, hold on, is it mic phone? Uh, uh, young man in the back, Randy Spies, it looks like you've got a question. <laughs> yes, young man, what is your question? You wanna come up, you can say it on mic. <laughs> any other questions while we're waiting? All right, Evan, this is for you, but take it lightly because it's really a joke, but I'm just wondering why you went from L.A. to San Diego and you forgot about Orange County. I was wondering if um, maybe, maybe you had some like mad beef with us or something or you thought we were like damaged goods or something, but I, I don't know. I was just kind of wondering, you know. No, I'm, just, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Uh, I, don't, I, I just uh, went where these guys told me where the good skaters are, so blame them. I tell you one thing, I tell you one thing, once the word went out for Mad Beef that we're going to eat city, I mean everyone represented, and New York City, you guys went, you know what's up, right? Randy, the real answer is like we had to get ours in before you took the game over, alright buddy? So we, we knew what was going to happen, so we were like alright, let's get this dude over real quick. He's gonna get his. All right, anyone else? Show hand, yeah, yeah. I have another question for Evan. Uh, well, I have two, if that's okay. Um, so my, my first question is, who were among the other possibilities of people who could have been sitting on this stage that ended up not coming on that trip? I'm, I'm really curious to hear about how how the folks that were here ended up being here other than just 
you know, we, we understand that they're, that you are selecting for the characters and the personalities, yes. but who else could have been these th th been here? Uh, I did not and, pick them. It was Brooke and Arlo, and um, B Love wasn't even supposed to be on it, and uh, I think he was like, right? You were. They sent me a tape. So so B wasn't originally supposed to be on it, but he just moved into town like a little bit before, and B Love. And we're like, no, he has to go. Like, we all fought for him to go. And, the, and back to the money thing was like, oh yeah, but it's gonna come out of your pay. <laughs> and we're like, okay. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But have, I was homeless at the time, so I didn't have anywhere to stay. Yeah. No, you had to have a lot of heart, and you had to be funny. Really, you had to just go out and throw yourselves out there and be funny and fun and be into it, you know, because we're making a film. Yeah, and I, I, listen, I have to say, but you have to understand, it wasn't just like there were all these skaters and Evan or any of us are like are putting photos on the wall and going, you know, they, they would make a great team. You pair that personality with that personality. We all literally lived in the same house. We all lived in Spawn Ranch. It was Brooke and Mike and B-Love and me. We all, the only casting decision that they made was Brian Smith. He didn't live with us. He hadn't been skating that long, to be honest. Um, and there was a little bit of uh, hesitation about Brian coming on because he wasn't in, you know, he didn't live in the house. He wasn't our close friend. We learned to love Brian and obviously he became a major fixture in skating. But I have to tell you at the time there was a little bit of contention that surrounded it. And maybe you saw that boil over a little bit in, <laughs> right, the confrontation. But, but let me also pay that off by saying it was a stroke of genius. I, as we all know, Brian was a powerhouse on the tour, and he delivered so much in terms of skating and personality. My my second question is, or my second question is, obviously there was there was a lot in the in the video that we consider to be, or you've you've described as antics, and. I, I assume that there's a lot that couldn't have gone in, and I think you alluded to that. So, and, and there must be that content somewhere, or there must be some content out there. Sadly, that sadly lost. Don't really? Know. Yeah, I know. Oh. It's really sad. I didn't know what I know now, that that content is, is so worth something now, you know? It was like, oh, look, done, next video. It's too bad. And I want to say this to all the filmmakers out there, if you want some help get into the business, or you need some advice, check me out. Instagram, Stone Films Earth. I can get you work, I can help you get you work, I can mentor your, your uh, you know, your career. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I got my, I got, especially if you're an operator, like you guys are, yeah, you get on the show, you make good money. Come on, bring it, seriously, you two guys, you. And we had the exact same question. When we put this together, we said, Evan, let, you know, we want to do a reunion. Let's get some of the, uh, the outtakes, right? Some of the uh, deleted scenes. And we found out exactly what he just told you. It doesn't exist, unfortunately. Can I, can I do a couple of deleted scene outtakes? <laughs> when we were talking about what would be amazing, look at me using a microphone correctly, you motherfuckers. So we were talking about, so here are my favorite moments that you didn't see. Because we were coerced into driving when we had a 17 hour drive from New York to Florida, Brian Smith would get bored and he would um, slowly move cars on the inside off the highway. He would just, because we had his 45 foot, he would, he would, well, whatever, yeah. And he would just slowly head them off the highway. You guys saw that we would change drivers whilst we're still driving, which what, probably wasn't smart. Are the outtakes? Greg Carroll no. waking up in the median. All right, Blading Cup, guys. Brooke Howard Smith, Michael Palick, Brandon Harden, Evan Bisson, Arlo Eisenberg, Brian Smith, Brian Bowen Smith out in Mexico. Guys, thank you so much. John Julio, Blading Cup, thank you for providing this forum. Thanks to all of you for coming out and being a part of this celebration and of thank, all of thank, that history. Thank you for a very, very special night for the five of us. So thank you so much. And the night is just getting started. Lots of great skating clips to see. We just took a look back at the history of skating. Now let's take a look forward. Thank you guys. Enjoy the Blading Cup. Can't wait to see your clips now, team.